I'm going to go through the 2021 AP Chemistry free response question number one. Now this says methanoic acid ionizes according to the equation above. So methanoic acid, we can see that is uh, a carboxylic acid, the COOH. And um, first thing we want to do is to write the expression for the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Now looking at this reaction, we can see there is the acid plus water liquid H3O plus and HCOO minus. Now this is important, the water is important because since it's a liquid, we're not going to include it in the Ka expression. So we're going to say Ka equals concentration. Now these are products over reactants. So we'll say H3O plus, concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of HCOO minus all over the concentration of the H. COOH. And that will get us full credit for putting that. And if we here say 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Now we should notice that that is a pretty small number, which means this is a weak acid. Uh, and so the uh, uh, just a few percent of these uh, acid molecules are actually going to dissociate in solution. Okay, next thing we want to do is to calculate the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of this uh, methanoic acid, which is also called formic acid, by the way. Now, this is going to be an equilibrium, so I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, ice box. And we're also going to have to be using uh, this expression. We're going to put those numbers in. So starting here, we'll say this is an ice box because the uh, first row, top row over here, this is the uh, initial values that we have. And down the third row, these are the equilibrium values. And here we're going to have the change we have to go through to get from the initial to the equilibrium values. Now, because H2O is a liquid and its concentration cannot change, and that's why it's not in the expression, we're not concerned with those boxes at all. So I just crossed them out. Now, this told us in the problem that we have a 0 0.25 molar solution. And it didn't say anything about H3O plus being added or this uh, formate ion, the uh, meth methanoate ion in there. So we're just going to mark those as zero uh, molar. So those are implied values. Now at this point, we don't have any more numbers to use. So what we're going to do is to start with using letters. And we're going to say, let's say that X amount of the, uh, uh, methan uh, the methanoic acid has dissociated. Now, I put a double line right here, and the reason I do that is to remind me that if this is a minus number over here, then this must be plus, and this must be plus. And since it's a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio, then this must be plus x and plus x. So at equilibrium, I'm going to have zero plus x, so this will be x, zero plus x, this will be x, and over here, this will be 0 0.25 minus x molar. So I have algebraic expressions for those three values, and I'm going to substitute them into my expression. And so I can see it's going to be x, x, and 0 0.25 minus x, all equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Now here's where the important part, we said, well, this is a small number, this uh, Ka expression is small. So this x is a pretty small value. So small, so we can say assume that x is much smaller than 0 0.25. Okay, and therefore, three dots means therefore, uh, 0 0.25 minus x is about the same, approximately the same as 0 0.25. Now that's going to simplify our math over here, so that's going to turn this into x squared over 0.25, 0 0.25 equals 1.8. So to calculate that, I'm going to say that this is going to be x squared equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 times 0.25. I kind of ran out of space. And so I want this, I want x, so I want the square root of this, I want the square root of these multiplied together, a little messy, but my x comes out to be uh, 6.7 times 10 to the negative 3, and that's a molarity. 
Um, and then we had to want to back and look and say, okay, what is that X? That X is my H3O plus concentration. So the question is actually asking for a pH, calculate the pH. So we know that pH is equal to the negative log of my H3O plus concentration. So it's going to be negative log of 6.708 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's going to end up being 2.17. Now, that's my final answer. Now, I've had two significant figures throughout the problem. So we have to remember that in a pH, okay, pHs are different than other numbers. In the pH, the number of decimal points is the number of significant figures. So my answer is 2.17. Now, going back for this first part here, the uh, part A, this is worth one point for getting this expression. And notice you do need to say Ka equals this. Don't just put these uh, uh, bracket ones. You need the Ka equals this or this expression equals this. You need to show that it's an expression. Second part is two points for getting to this 2.17. You get one point for getting to this number. And then you get a second point for turning it into the pH. So we've had three points so far. If a reader were grading this and they saw your work, if they saw 2.17, they would give you both points right away. Okay. Now notice I did not round off this number because it's in the middle of the problem. So uh, 6.7 times 10 to minus 3 would have been fine. Next problem, we want to do the Lewis electron dot diagram for methanoic acid. Show all bonding and non-bonding valence electrons. So let's kind of just do it off to the side. I would say, okay, I've got H, can be bonded to a C. And if I have done, you know, a lot of uh, organic or just a little bit of organic, you would know that this is how uh, the COOH works on here. And that on this oxygen, there would be two lone pairs. On this oxygen, there would be two lone pairs. So that would be a great answer. Now you could also do is you could do everything with uh, dots. So we could show that all these bonds, there's a double bond there, put on the lone pairs. That would be an acceptable answer. And another acceptable answer would be to do this all with lines. You can show lone pairs with lines like this as well. So you can do dots, you can do lines, you can do combinations of dots and lines. And this is the, uh, the version that they show on the uh, scoring guidelines. So this is all worth one point. And it's either correct or wrong. And the biggest problem is uh, people not putting the correct number of dots or leaving the, the uh, lone pairs off of the oxygen. When you get to part D, now it says, in aqueous solution, the compound H2NNH2 reacts according to the equation above. Okay, and this is given as a KB, so we know that this is a base, which means it's a proton acceptor. And we can see what happens here, is here's a, a couple of H's and there's a, a nitrogen with a lone pair on it. That a hydrogen from the water will sit onto that nitrogen. So now instead of being NH2, it's NH3 with a plus charge. And there'll be an OH left over from the water. And the KB is given, and again, that's a pretty small number. So it reacts to the equation above a 50 milliliter sample of 0.25 molar, okay, is uh, combined with 50 milliliter sample of 0.25 molar methanoic acid. So we're putting equal moles, equal amounts of equal moles of the base and the acid together. Write the balanced equation. So let's write the base, H2NNH2. We're going to mix that with the acid which was HCOOH. And we know what happens here is that this H takes off, you know, that's the one that's donated, and this is where an H will be uh, added on. So this is our base, it's our proton acceptor, this is our acid proton donor. So when we get done, we're going to end up with H2NNH3 with a plus charge and HCOOH.
O minus. And if we do all that, that's worth one point. Now, is the resulting solution acidic, basic, or neutral? Justify your answer. Well, and what's happened here in this equation is that in this problem is we have the acid, that's our acid, and we have our base, and we have equal moles of those two. But when we put those together, then we don't have any acid or base left over. We have the conjugate acid and the conjugate base of those two species. And those are the ones that are going to affect the pH. So if these were exactly the same strength, if the, if the conjugate base and conjugate acid were exactly the same strength, then the solution would be neutral, but they're not. We saw that the Kb is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6. The Ka was 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. So our acid was a little bit stronger than our base. So the conjugate acid and base are going to affect the pH. So let's see how we can do that clearly. And what I just wrote some things out. Here is my base, and it is a proton acceptor, and it turns into the conjugate acid. Now, I have the, we're given the Kb for the base, so you can calculate the Ka for the uh, conjugate acid that's left over by taking the K of water divided by Kb, so 1 times 10 to minus 14 divided by 1.3 times 10 to minus 6. And I got this number, 7.7 .7 times 10 to minus 9. In the same way, we have our acid, and once it donates its proton, then it turns into the conjugate base, HCOO minus. And we were given the Ka for the acid, so we can calculate the Kb for this base. And we see that by the same kind of calculation, it's 5.6 times 10 to minus 11. So we can see by that that our Ka of the conjugate acid is greater than the Kb of the conjugate base. So the solution is acidic because the Ka of the conjugate base acid, excuse me, conjugate acid is greater than the Kb of the conjugate base. And that will get us our point, and that's worth uh, one point for having saying that is acidic and also for um, uh, giving a justification. Now, my justification involved uh, calculations because that helps me, but I think if you just said this much, you'd be actually be okay. The next part here, part E, Okay, when a catalyst is added to a solution of methanoic acid, the reaction represented by the following equation occurs. So we've, now we're still talking about methanoic acid, but we're talking about a totally different situation. So here we have the methanoic acid turns into H2 and CO2. Is the reaction a redox reaction? Justify your answer. Okay, so is it a redox reaction? The way to tell here is to look at the oxidation numbers. And if you've done oxidation numbers, you know that for any element in its natural state, the oxidation number is zero. So hydrogen is zero. Now in its compounds, hydrogen is almost always plus one. So I can say, yes, this is redox because hydrogen that was plus one has changed to hydrogen that is zero. Okay, and so I know that that is redox. Now, if somebody is changing from plus one to zero, that's reduction, there must also be an oxidation. So let's look at the oxygens. Okay, oxygen in this compound is almost always minus two. And over here, these are going to be minus two. So the oxygen is not changing. So let's check the carbon. The carbon, uh, let's pick up another color. Carbon over here, oxygens are minus two, and there's two of them. And so the carbon must be plus 4. And over here, hydrogen is plus 1, plus 1, minus 2, minus 2. So this carbon must be plus 2. So we can also say yes, because I have a carbon in a plus 2 state, and that's changing into carbon in a plus 4 state. So in either, either of these, or both, would be fine to show yes, this is a uh, redox reaction, and giving this part or this part will give me my point. Now, 
We're still talking about that with that uh, methanoic acid breaking down into hydrogen and oxygen. So the reaction occurs in a rigid 4.3 liter vessel at 25 degrees. Now, before I even forget this, I'm going to stop and take this number and change it from 25 degrees. I'm going to change it to 298 Kelvin so I don't forget to do it later. And the total pressure is monitored as shown in the graph above. So the total pressure ends up being 24 atmospheres. The vessel originally did not contain any gas. So calculate the number of moles of CO2, moles of CO2 produced in the reaction, and assume that the amount of CO2 dissolved in the solution is negligible, so no complicating factors. So what's happening? This, um, we want the moles of CO2. We know the volume. We know the temperature. Okay, and here's the pressure, but this pressure is the total pressure, and that means that's the pressure of the hydrogen gas and the pressure of the CO2 gas. And we're talking about moles of CO2, so we just want the pressure of the CO2. So this 24 atmospheres is for both gases, and since they're created, you know, the same time, one and one, then the pressure of the CO2 must be one half of 24 so it's going to be 12 atmospheres. So knowing all this, we can say, okay, this sounds like a PV equals NRT problem. And we're looking for N, number of moles of CO2. So that's going to be PV over RT. The pressure we said is 12 atmospheres. The volume is 4.3 liters. R, okay, we have to look up on the equation sheet, and 0 0.08206, that's liters, atmospheres, per mole, Kelvin, and the temperature is 298 Kelvin. Now, to get to my answer here, okay, atmospheres should cancel out, liters cancel out, Kelvin cancels out, so I'm left with moles in the bottom, which is going to be moles on top. And this is going to come out to be 2.11 moles of CO2. And that's my answer. Now, this is a two-point problem. Okay, you get one point for getting to this answer. And you get one point for realizing that the pressure that you're going to use is only 12 atmospheres, not to 24. So if you miss that part and you use 24, you're going to get double this answer, but you're still going to get one point because you're doing the right thing with the wrong value here. So two-point problem, one for getting the uh, 12 atmospheres of CO2, and the second for using PV equals NRT to get the number of moles. Okay, the last part, after the reaction has proceeded for several minutes, does the amount of catalyst increase, decrease, or remain the same? And from what we just know about catalysts, okay, catalysts are not used up or added in a reaction, not created or used up, so they're going to remain the same. So our answer is going to be remain the same. And all we need to say is that a catalyst is neither used up or created in a reaction or something equivalent. And that is also one point. So that's a 10 point problem altogether. That's FRQ number one from the 2021 AP exam.